Yes. We'll give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For the past couple of weeks, we've been going through a series on I am. A series on I am trying to comprehend, if possible, who God is through understanding His Son, Jesus. Uh, God is a spirit that is incomprehensible to us. Without faith, it's impossible to comprehend Him. But through His Son, Jesus, we have a God who's relational. We have a God who's intentional and a God who not only can we understand and comprehend, but a God I truly believe we can know. So the more we know Jesus, the more we know God. This morning we're going to talk to you about I am the door. Uh, If you remember, we gave a definition of who God was, and I have that up here on your screen. And we're going to show it to you in just a second. This is the name of God that God gave to Moses when he was in the wilderness. And this is what it says. Ego, I, me, means I am. The definition is this, I eternally was, as now I am and ever continue to be, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we have a foundation that we're building this on, even though we may not be able to comprehend God, we believe that God reveals Himself through His Son. And this is our foundation verse. Let's all read that together this morning. This is what it says. All things are delivered unto me of my Father. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. And that's our goal through this series, is for the Son to reveal unto us the Father. We started out with, I am the bread of life. And I am the bread of life told us that Jesus is the one who spiritually sustains us. We learn that everybody loves a miracle. We learn that everybody gets hungry. And we learn that everybody needs Jesus. And then we saw I am the light of the world. And that shows us that through Him we we gain spiritual understanding and wisdom for living. And we learn that the light of the world illuminates and the light of the world enlightens. And today we're going to see I am the door And try to discover that He has given us free and unlimited access to His kingdom. If you have your Bibles this morning, go with the book of John chapter 10. John chapter 10, we're going to read verses 1 through 10. It should be on your screen this morning. This is what Jesus says. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door unto the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice." And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Say that with me. More abundantly. Let's pray over the Word. Heavenly Father, I thank You today for Your Word. I ask You today to illuminate the Scriptures to us to both illuminate and enlighten us as we understand and grow in you, Heavenly Father, to help me to completely decrease and get out of the way so that you can come to the forefront and so that we can hear from you today. And all these things we give you the praise and anticipate a word from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Author W. Philip Keller spent some time as a sheep rancher in Africa and wrote a couple of books relating to his experiences as a shepherd and relating that to his faith in Christ, the Good Shepherd. Uh, He said that sheep are very restless creatures. 
They are easily startled. And once startled, it's hard for them to settle down and sleep or settle down and rest. And so Mr. Keller said there are four conditions that have to be met in order for sheep to lie down. They must be free of fear. They must be free from friction with others in the flock. They must be free from parasites and pests. And they must be free from hunger. Those are the four things we're going to talk about today. The first one is this. In order for us as sheep to find rest, we have to be free from fear. Of all domesticated animals, sheep are the most helpless. That's a polite way of saying sheep are dumb. They're not too bright. Sheep will spend their entire day grazing, wandering from place to place, never looking up to see what's around them, always looking down at their food. As a result, they often become lost. But, unlike other animals, sheep have no homing instinct. They are totally incapable of finding their way to the sheepfold, even when it's in plain sight. By nature, sheep are followers. If a lead sheep steps off a cliff, the others will follow. Additionally, sheep are easily susceptible to injuries and are utterly helpless against predators. If a wolf enters a sheep pen, the sheep will not defend themselves. They won't try to run away. They won't spread out. Instead, they huddle together and are easily slaughtered. If a sheep falls into moving water, it will drown. However, sheep fear moving water and will not drink from any stream or lake unless the water is perfectly still. That's why the psalmist said that he leads me beside still waters. Fear is one of the enemy's most popular weapons that he uses against us. Worry, anxiety, fear can overwhelm us with a thick shadow of darkness, controlling our every move and decision. And in the world we live in today, it's very easy to be afraid. There's wars, there's conflict, there's persecution, there's violence and crime and natural disasters, terrorism, economic uncertainty, unemployment, division, disease, death. We fear for our children's future. We fear for our families. We fear for our financial future. We fear for our safety. The list goes on and on and on. There's a lot we could potentially worry about. If we wanted to, we could become professional worriers. Anybody here know? Don't raise your hand and please don't point. But does anybody here know a professional worrier? That's all they do is worry about what could happen or what might happen, or what probably can happen, possibly. There's a lot to worry about if we're not careful. But the Bible tells me in Isaiah 41.10, To fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. What do I do when I'm afraid? What do I do when the terrors keep me awake at night? What do I do when every time I turn on the news, I see more and more death and destruction and dismemberment and attack against us, against Christians, against our nation? What do I do? The Bible tells me in Psalm 56, 3, What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. The sheep are not afraid as long as they can see the shepherd. As long as they know the shepherd is there, they are not afraid. You see, my trust in God has to overshadow my fear. There's a lot of things around me that are dangerous. There are a lot of things around me that could destroy me. I'm just a sheep. I'm not too bright. Sometimes I walk with my head looking down, not paying any attention to my surroundings. It's easy for me to get lost. It's easy for me to fall off a cliff. It's easy for me to not recognize a wolf until it's too late. But my trust is not in myself or in my ability to care for myself. My trust is in my shepherd. My trust is in Jesus. And as long as my trust is in Jesus, it doesn't matter what's going on around me. Jesus is going to be there for me. He's going to take care of me. My Bible says He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He is always there. Sheep place their faith and trust in the shepherd. And that's how they have freedom from fear. 
The next thing that we talk about this morning is that we need to be free from friction. There are two kinds of sheepfolds or pens that they talk about in the Bible. Uh, one kind was a public sheepfold that was found in cities and villages. It would be large enough to hold several flocks of sheep. The gates were used for sheep pens, and they were often built alongside buildings in a town or in a village. The pens would have a sturdy structure with tall walls and a completely enclosed locking door or gate. These type of enclosures might be owned or managed by a shepherd, but more often than not, they were rented. Either way, a shepherd would pay to keep the sheep in this kind of pen. Sometimes the owner would have a watchman who kept the keys and opened the gate for those shepherds who paid rent. The shepherds would call their sheep, each of which knew its own shepherd's voice and would lead them out to pasture. If people didn't enter through the gate, they had to climb over the wall, which most likely meant they were thieves. This didn't mean they wanted to hurt the sheep. They just wanted to steal them. Hurting the sheep would be the last thing thieves would do. They would need the sheep to be in good condition so they could sell them. They simply used sheep for their own gain and for their own advantage. In the Bible, when it's translated, Jesus said, I am the door. Depending on which translation you use, it's going to say, I am the door or I am the gate. Both of those translations are applicable in this Scripture. When He says, I am the gate, that means He is our security. He is that secure structure that keeps us safe. And nobody can get in without Him, without the gate. Jesus said to us in John 3.3, 3, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. There's a lot of people in the world today that want to tell you that Christianity isn't the only way. There's a lot of people that want to tell you that there's all kinds of ways to heaven. Gandhi said we're all children of God. There's coexist bumper stickers you can see everywhere that you drive. Everybody says God is so big and so great and so mighty that He's not going to just choose one way to get to Him. If we call out to God, no matter whose name we use, He's going to hear us. But the Bible says that straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth unto righteousness and few there be that find it. Jesus talked about thieves and He talked about robbers. These are those who would come in and try to lead the sheep out another way. They try to lift them up over the wall. They try to throw them to their companions. They would try to trick the sheep into following them. But His Word says that His sheep, if you're really His sheep, will flee from them because why? They do not recognize their voice. It's so important for us as sheep. It's so important for us as children of God. If we want to know God, we have to know His voice. And we can't be familiar to the voice of strangers. A lot of us like to walk a tightrope, like to walk on the top of a fence and see how close we can get to the good stuff while holding on to Jesus with this hand. I can't hold Jesus in one hand and Satan in the other. I'm going to be ripped in half. One of our problems today is we are so comfortable and familiar with the voice of sin and the voice of this world that when we hear it, we start to follow. Well, the Bible says that His sheep don't recognize that voice. His sheep flee from that voice and His sheep only go when the shepherd calls Him. Matter of fact, when all these sheep are in that giant pen, they're all mixed together. There's no way to tell whose sheep is whose. But when the shepherd comes, he calls out and his sheep recognize him and come forward. You can see this today in the Middle East when they, all the sheep are gathered together around a water source or gathered together around a pasture when it's time to go. The shepherds will use a certain call or cry out in a certain way or whistle in a certain way and their sheep instantly recognize the shepherd's voice and they peel off and follow. It's amazing to watch. Sheep know the voice of the shepherd, and another voice they will not follow. There are so many people who want to offer you salvation some other way. There are so many people that want to tell you there's an easier way. There's a faster way. There's a better way. But I'm here to tell you this morning, there is only one way. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. 
Robert uh, Fuquay, in his book, The God We Can Know, says that sheep spent their lives traveling in and out of doorways. They came in through the gate for security and rest. Inside the gate, inside the pen, they were free from predators or bandits. A good shepherd who cared about the conditions of his flock would often inspect each sheep as it entered through the gate. This gate represented security. Sheep also went out through the gates to find pasture and water and enjoyment. In the pasture, sheep could roam and run and feel alive. If you hadn't noticed before, sheep enjoy grazing. They like a place where they can stretch their legs and move. The gate led to joy. A good shepherd always watched over the sheep coming in and going out. And we can see, I think, why Jesus relates to us like sheep. We all spend our lives traveling through a similar doorway. Every one of us is constantly moving between a search for familiarity and a return to security. We want to go out. We want to see the world. We want to see all that God has to offer us. But we want to be back inside where it's safe when there's trouble. And we're constantly going out and coming in. Going out and coming in. But the Bible tells me in Psalms 121 verse 8, The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in, from this time forth, even forevermore. He is the gate. He is our security. He is the entrance. Nobody else can get through. Nobody else can get through the gate. If anybody else tries to call you any way other than His way, they are a thief. They are a robber. They're trying to steal you away from God. Don't let anybody steal you away from God. There's only one way to heaven. That's through Jesus Christ. He is the gate. The next thing we need to find a freedom from is freedom from parasites and pests. Say that three times fast if you have a lisp. Parasites and pests, parasites and pests, parasites and pests. It's not easy. There's a second kind of sheep pen that the Bible tells us about, and this one's in the countryside. We actually have a picture of this one up on your screen. This type of sheep pen was nothing more than a rough circle of rocks piled into a wall with a small opening space to enter. Through it, the sheep, the shepherd would drive the sheep in at nightfall. Now, if you notice, there's no gate on these kind of pens. Just an opening. The shepherd would keep the sheep in and wild animals out by lying across the opening. He would sleep there. In this case, literally becoming the door to the sheep. A good shepherd who cared about the conditions of his flock would often inspect each sheep as it entered the gate. You can go on the next slide, please. The shepherd would look for parasites or injuries and properly tend to them. Have you ever seen the pictures of the shepherd with the sheep walking through and he's got the horn of oil pouring the oil on the sheep? You've seen that. It's an old picture. You see it in the old family Bibles. Well, what they did was, whenever they call the sheep in at night, before they let them go in the pen, they inspected them one by one and they checked to make sure they had no injuries Make sure they didn't have any hurts on them. Make sure they didn't have any parasites crawling on them. Because if they let them in with that stuff on them, that would infect the rest of the sheep. So the shepherd at the door where he was the door, as he let the sheep in, he would inspect them and make sure they were taken care of. And if any of them had any problems, he would cover them with oil. Oil was a balm, oil was a salve, oil was used for healing in the Old Testament, in the New Testament. And so he would stay there and keep any sheep out that had any injuries until he could anoint them and cover them. And once he provided a covering for them, they were allowed to enter in. Well, that's just the same thing Jesus does to us today. He covers us with his precious blood. He checks us for any spots, he checks us for any blemishes, If we have anything from the world that's been placed upon us, He anoints it with oil. He covers it with His precious blood. And we're allowed free access into the kingdom. We're allowed access in. Talked about two things, parasites and pests. Parasites are internal. They start on the inside. They're things that grow within us. Parasites are very, very small. If you don't have a microscope, you cannot see most of them. But they do great damage. Because they multiply. If we're not careful, we carry sin within us. And it may start out something very, very small. Very, very subtle. Satan doesn't walk up to you with an axe and say, you should probably go murder some people today. 
Satan walks up to you as you're driving your car and somebody cuts you off and says, man, that guy was a jerk, wasn't he? And you say, yes, Satan, he was a jerk. And you get a little mad, a little angry. He starts off very small and very slow, just like a parasite. But if we're not stopped, if we're not cleansed, if we don't repent, that parasite starts to multiply. It starts to grow. It gets bigger and bigger inside of us until we're completely taken over. So the good shepherd protects us from the parasite. The Bible also, the word also says here that we have to be protected from pests. Pests are external. Out here in the open field, the shepherd didn't have to worry about thieves or robbers trying to steal the sheep. Out here in the open field, he had to worry about lions and bears and wolves that wanted to kill and destroy the sheep. Remember, sheep aren't too bright. If an animal got into the pen, the sheep would all huddle together and be just like a smorgasbord, spread out so the wolf could take his choice. At the top of those rocks, the shepherd would put thorny bushes to keep the animals from trying to jump over the rocks. And he built them up high enough they couldn't jump over. The only way wild animals could get in was through the opening. And that meant to get to the sheep, they would have to confront the shepherd. So the shepherd, in his role as not only our gate, our security, our protector, but also our door, our free access, was literally the door to the pen. Animals and dangers could not touch the sheep as long as the shepherd was there. Satan cannot touch you as long as Jesus is in your life. The world cannot harm you as long as Jesus is in your life. Yes, bad things happen. Yes, Satan tries to destroy us. But as long as we are held in the hand of our good shepherd, he cannot touch our souls. We are redeemed through the blood of Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ is our door. No enemy can attack us. No enemy can hurt us. We can be calm. We can rest in His security because He is the door. Psalms 27, 1-3 says it like this. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. The sheep can find freedom from the parasites and the pest as long as we trust in our shepherd. Then finally, they said that the sheep need to be free from Hunger. Sheep are totally dependent upon the shepherd who tends them with care and compassion. Shepherds were the providers, the guides, the protectors, and constant companions of the sheep. Shepherds were inseparable from their flocks. The shepherd would lead the sheep to safe places to graze and make them lie down for several hours in a shady place. Then, as night fell, the shepherd would lead the sheep to the protection of the sheep fold. Do you feel like you're lost? Do you feel full of anxiety and depression? Do you feel like you can't find your way? Let the shepherd lead you. A lot of us think we can find a better way, or an easier path, or a shortcut. There is no shortcut to glory. There's only one way. There's only one path. Allow the shepherd to lead us. Are you tired this morning? Are you weary this morning? Matthew eleven twenty eight says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Are you hungry this morning? Are you thirsty this morning? Revelation seven seventeen says, For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Are you afraid this morning? Are you afraid of all the enemies of the world that come against you? 2 Chronicles 32, 7-8 says this, Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid nor dismayed for the king of Assyria, nor for all the multitudes that is with him. For there be more with us than with him. What's the Bible say? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. Doesn't matter how big the enemies are against us. My God is bigger. Doesn't matter how large or insurmountable the obstacles we may face are in front of us. 
My God is bigger. Doesn't matter if all the powers of hell come against us. My God is bigger. The sheep don't focus on their surroundings. They focus on the shepherd. They don't have to constantly be watching. They don't have to constantly be wary. All they have to do is eat the grass, drink the water, rest when it's time to rest, move when it's time to move. The sheep place their trust in the shepherd. The shepherd is our door. The shepherd is our gate. The shepherd today, our good shepherd, can still calm us in the face of crisis. There is nothing that can come against us that we cannot be free from. Because Jesus is our door. The sheep were perfectly content. You ever seen a mad sheep? You ever see a mad lamb? Nope. They are the happiest things I've ever seen in my life. They jump around, they play, they eat the grass, they drink the water, they take a nap. They are just as happy-go-lucky as you'll ever see. A comedian talked about visiting uh, a farm, and the guy gave him a lamb to hold in his arms. And he held the lamb, the lamb fell asleep in his arms. And the guy said, the lamb must trust you. The comedian said, he has very poor judgment. But he looked down and he realized that he would never eat lamb again. Never eat it again. And he never had. And then the uh, friend said, I've got some cows in the pasture. You want to see them? He said, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Lambs are content. They are fully secure. They don't worry about the fact that they can't defend themselves. They don't worry about the fact that they can't find their way home. They don't worry about the fact that there are constantly people around trying to destroy them. Thieves loved lambs. Lambs were so valuable in this time. Their wool, their meat, they were used for sacrifices. They would raise a huge profit if a thief got a hold of them. Lambs weren't worried about the thieves. Sheep are delicious. If you don't believe me, go get some lamb chops. Mm-hmm. Mm, good. Wolves love to eat sheep. Every old fable that you read, what's the wolf trying to eat? The sheep. Unless it's three little pigs. The only reason the wolf went after the pigs is because the sheep were on vacation. Wolves and dangerous creatures love sheep because they're innocent, they're delicious, and they're slow. But the sheep don't have to worry about the wolves. The sheep don't have to worry about the parasites or the pests. They don't have to worry about those inside trying to steal them away. They don't have to worry about those on the outside trying to destroy them because their trust is not in the walls. It's not in themselves. It's in the good shepherd. It's in the door. It's in the gate. That's who Jesus is. We're getting ready to close. If I can get somebody to come to the piano, please. Whoever wants to. Anybody that wants to can. Ira Sankey was the song leader for the great evangelist D.L. Moody back in the 1800s. On Christmas Eve, 1875, Sankey was on a Delaware River steamboat, and the other passengers recognized him. They asked him to sing a hymn, so he chose William B. Bradbury's Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. One of the stanzas began, We are thine, do thou befriend us. Be the guardian of our way. When he finished, a man asked Sankey if he had ever served in the Union Army. Mr. Sankey said he had. The man asked then if he had ever served in a particular area in 1862. Again, Sankey said he had served there as a century many nights. The man replied, so did I, but I was serving in the Confederate Army. One night I snuck up on you, raised my musket, and took aim. In that instant, just as a moment ago, you raised your eyes to heaven and began to sing. You sang the same words you did just now. I heard the words perfectly. We are thine. Do thou befriend us. Be the guardian of our way. Those words stirred up many memories. I began to think of my childhood and my God-fearing mother. She had many times sung that song to me. When you finished singing, it was impossible for me to take aim. I thought the Lord who is able to save that man from certain death must surely be great and mighty. 
and my arm dropped limp at my side, and the gun went down. Ira Sankey had no idea how the shepherd of his soul was looking out for him on that night in 1862. He had no idea of the predator that was out there. All he knew was to focus on his good shepherd. I have no idea what tomorrow holds in your life. I have no idea what kind of traps the enemy has set in front of you. Traps to snare you. Traps to destroy you. I have no idea what sort of things the world has that's going to come against you. But I do know this. It doesn't matter what comes against you. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. My faith, my hope, my confidence doesn't reside in the high walls, doesn't reside in the guards or the padlocks. My faith and confidence is in my gate and it's in my door. Jesus Christ is the barrier that keeps me from the mercy of the enemy. His blood washes my soul. I'm free from fear in Jesus. I'm free from friction in Jesus. I'm free from those who would attack me on the inside and the outside by Jesus. And I'm free from hunger for Jesus, my bread of life. Jesus, my living water. He's the one who cares for me. He's the one that sustains me. The psalmist said he leads me by green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me on the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, even if I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For he's with me. His rod and his staff comforts me. Matter of fact, he's prepared a place for me at a table. He anoints my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Jesus is the door. Jesus is the gate. There's no other way. There's no other way to make it. There's no other way to get to heaven without Jesus Christ. The Bible says that God so loved the world. He so loved me and He so loved you so much that He gave His only begotten Son that if we believe in Him, we will not perish. We will have eternal life. Your eternal life today is in the door. Your eternal life today is in the door. That door is open for you right now. The light is shining through. There is no barrier to keep you from glory. We have unlimited access to the kingdom of heaven. All we have to do is trust in our shepherd. I've heard it said a lot of times, if you're waiting for a door to open and it's closed, just praise God in the hallway. Well, with God, there are no hallways. I stay where I am until the door opens, then I move to where I'm supposed to be. Sheep didn't have to wait out in the hallway for the shepherd. He always had the next door ready. He always had the next door open. When God opens the door for you, don't wait, don't hesitate, don't worry about what's on the other side. I don't trust in this world. I don't trust in this society. I don't trust in myself. I trust in the shepherd. My faith in Him is stronger than my fear. My faith in Him is stronger than my doubt. My faith in Him is stronger than my depression or my anxiety or anything that I have that comes against me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper as long as my faith is in the shepherd. Jesus Christ is the door. He is our access to the kingdom. He is our protection and our provision. Trust in the shepherd today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you for your son that is that gate through which no one can enter, no thief or robber can get through, but only you, Lord. And we know your voice. Help us to know your voice. Help us to never forget what it sounds like when you say, come. Help us to never forget your voice, Lord. Don't ever let us get familiar with the voice of a stranger. Only your voice is who we need to recognize. And thank you, Lord, for your Son, who stretched out his arms and became the door for us to not only protect us against the acts of the enemy, to save our souls, but to offer us unlimited access to your kingdom where we can spend eternity with you. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord, for the gate. Thank you, Lord, for the door. And all these things we give you praise. And all these things we give you honor. And all these things we give you glory. For you are God, and there is none like you. And all God's people said, Amen. You're dismissed. God bless you.